Aloha and welcome, beloved hearts. Thank you so much for joining me today for this Mastery Empowerment course, where we are going to be reviewing the keys, the codes, and the crossroads of the year of 2024, and looking at everything with a retrospective and kind of a revisit of strategy for quantum consciousness, for living the quantum lifestyle. So back in February, we had the Keys, Codes, and Crossroads of 2024 Mastery Empowerment class. And it was here that we introduced many different concepts to assist you in this very amazing time of shift, very challenging time, a lot going on around the world right now, and that there is an entirely new way to be as consciousness from a quantum perspective. And one of the ways that we want to support you is this gentle, consistent remembering that we no longer live in a linear construct. And so we all have to learn how to be, how to function again from a quantum state. And in that initial webinar earlier in the year, we shared with you the waveform concept existing as a wave. And this goes into quantum mechanics where all of creation exists either in particles or in wave forms. And that all of those are actually influenced directly by the observer, by the perceiver, by the individual. And this is also called the observer effect in quantum physics and quantum mechanics. Uh, as you think, so shall you be, right? Now, it's going to start to become very clear and perhaps a very uncomfortable at times and confrontational re realization that our subconscious is coming up. And the last thing we want to do is create unconsciously. Many of us are having moments of revelation where we are having to have some pretty serious, uh, putting all our cards out on the table experiences with ourselves and saying, oh my gosh, look at all of this that I created from the old paradigm way of being, from unconsciousness. This could be with relationships, uh, with other people, and in general, your entire reality. So we're starting to really see and starting to have experiences, pleasant and unpleasant, of how our reality is relational. And it's all based on the inside, right? The intel inside is now dictating and translating, and we're getting like immediate karmic feedback. And this is where I say it can be uncomfortable or it can be wonderful too, right? Everything is matching where we are. Um, and so it could be relationships with other people, but firstly, it's about your relationship to yourself and how that is translating and being translated in real time for you in your actual experience. So earlier in the year, we talked about starting to exist from the quantum perspective, which really, when we say confrontational, it is because it is showing us how we have to take more responsibility, how we have to become more accountable to ourselves. And there's a lot of discipline involved in this, right? Because we're doing this inside of ourselves. There's not necessarily someone that's going to come around and check you and make sure that, you know, I'm just seeing like a military imagery, like your shoes are polished and your shoes are tied and, you know, you're, you're standing up straight, like, you're in charge of this, right? And so one of the most intense themes that we revealed for the initial class, Keys, Codes, and Crossroads in February, was, you know, this being an eight year, year of the dragon, this is where we talk about confrontation, that there is so much power, that there's so much karmic responsibility that what we are willing to put in, what we are willing to invest and this is where the discipline and the focus comes in, right? The devotion, becoming more of a sacred being in our life, in all ways of expression, in every action, every word, and being intensely, acutely aware of our thoughts full time now. You're going to get what you put in. So a lot of us are seeing, oh my gosh, you know, my low self-esteem my trauma bonding, uh, whatever patterns you want to reflect upon, the old, old karma, the very old pain body stories, the wounding, any of that that we are still dragging around at this point, it's going to become so uncomfortable where we are forced to deal, right? And so this is where I want to start to share how we're bookending this experience now, because we we shared the original templates for this year with this masterclass in February. And now here we are eight months later, 
uh, in the 10, the completion month, right, of October. There's a lot of ancestral themes at play, right? Um, it's the first double month of the year in numerology for us. So it is intense to look at everything as a creator being and as one with it all and unified with it all. And what's going to become intensely, uncomfortably loud for you in your experiences is where there is discord, where there is a split or a bifurcation of your being, where there is a schism, right? Where there are fragments mind mapping and becoming so aware of yourself as a specialist is going to be very valuable for the rest of the year going into 2025. We really want to do our best now to give our best shot really is the only way to guarantee um, that we're transcending the unconsciousness where we gave it power and we let it rule our lives. So where we keep going small, where we keep li living from ego consciousness, all of these themes are going to come up and be very uncomfortable. Uh, one of the massive key codes of Saturn, the planet Saturn. Saturn is both female and male. You could think of them as your elderly aspects of being, your inner wisdom keepers. It's the energy of harvest, um, you know, the fruits of your labor, uh, whether those are ones that serve you or ones that do not serve you. But the message of Saturn was about cultivation and what I received was, if you're comfortable, you're toxic right now, meaning that as humans, the human ego has um, some habits like being lazy, right, or being unmotivated. So a lot of people right now, you're seeing this play out in lifetime with these different uh, events. We call it the narrative of the polycrisis, uh, which is happening through weather, uh, all kinds of extreme, you know, human themes, right? Uh, and we'll get into weather separately um, because that has to do with the elementals, which has to do with the consciousness of the people that live in the area, right? Um, but basically, if we're comfortable and we're not willing to do the work, we will become uncomfortable. So it's better to just make yourself uncomfortable. And what do we mean by that? We mean doing something every day that scares you. And not in an extreme way, right? But doing something that for you is so radical, is so bold. It's a sacred rebel where you're like, I'm going to rebel against my egoic, trying to stay small, low confidence aspect of myself. And I'm going to finally go to that place, or I'm going to say hi to that person, or I'm going to reach out. There's all different ways. These are actual micro steps that add up karmically and energetically, bringing you huge. There, It's a huge deposit in your karma. Uh, when you do something every day that scares you, try something new, shake up your routine, start to commit to a whole new regimen, a higher level of accountability for yourself, really living from the avatar level of consciousness. And it is very intense. Um, however, each of us is responsible for our journey. So before we dive into the material, just want to say, hey, where is everybody? Where are you? You're welcome to put it into the chat here. I am currently located in the Pacific Northwest, so I travel between the state of Washington, Oregon, and California, going up and down. Uh, one of my grid worker roles, if you will, is a keeper of the West Gates, so that's the whole West Coast, uh, so that's where I'm located, and just wanting to invite you now, we'll do a little collective heart-centered grid working, so wherever you are on the planet, seeing yourself as a beautiful shaft of light, a beautiful lighthouse, a beautiful lantern emitting light all around you, 360 degrees, also below you and into the earth, into the streets, into the infrastructure where you are located right now, and welcoming in those gifts of stabilization, of divine love and light to come through as our natural state of being and to start to shine forth and to connect and unify our hearts all across the grids now, all across Gaia creating this beautiful diamond dew web, crystalline web, connecting in with new earth and 5D and above crystalline templates for the new earth and calling in greater stabilization and love, asking our guidance and our ancestors to assist us in this now, to be able to hear them much more easily, to get out of our own way and to be able to tune in and feel the love that is here for us, the love that we are. 
and to radiate that out into the collective. So through our own cells, radiating out throughout our being, 360 degrees, bathing our cells, our DNA, every aspect of our being with this beautiful love light, seeing a beautiful white diamond at the center of your chest, connecting to the diamond of your heart. And this is activating the Christed avatar and all the sacred aspects, the ascended master aspects, activating our divinity, our soul, light, the mighty I am, holy I am presence. And seeing the light emanate from that white diamond forward and back through your being, anchoring down and above. So you're this huge, massive pillar of light that's radiating out like a star in many directions. So thank you for joining me here in the unified field. All right, so now we're gonna come into some of the material here. The first piece that's so critical now at this juncture is coming into the body. So we want to ask you to point and make note where are you right now? Where are you in your body? Point to yourself. Are you in your head? Are you somewhere in the body where there is pain right now? Physical pain? Emotional pain? Are you outside of the body somewhere floating around, right? You want to start to take note. Oh my gosh, I'm not in my body, right? Or where, where are you? Where is your location? Where is your GPS? Because inside is the universe. So we want to be grounded and centered in our universe, right? Shining in our soul light, our soul star, soul sun light. So now what I invite you to do is close your eyes and start to come into your breath. We're going to do some embodiment here. If you're scattered and you're spinning and you're not centered, then you're not able to be in your totality, in your divinity, in your wholeness, and everything that you're trying to create, it won't really work very well because you're too scattered, right? So we're going to call back all of our energy now. So bringing your attention to your belly and just bringing in some grounding and centering breaths into the nose, expanding on that inhale and out through the mouth, feeling yourself anchor and root and sit seated more deeply, arriving from the skin in. Inhale into the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. Feeling that exhale anchor you even more deeply into the vertical current. So you're really feeling that you are in your root. Continuing to breathe in and out. Breathing in peace and love. Breathing out peace and love. Breathing in appreciation and gratitude, breathing out appreciation and gratitude. Breathing in and welcoming expansion and connection with our higher self wisdom and divine neutrality as the observer, exhaling, welcoming in the same. And now that we are a little bit more present and grounded into the body with the eyes closed, I invite you now to call back your energy, calling your energy back to yourself from everywhere it has traveled to. Conversations, thoughts, looping, events, social media, work, family, calling it all back to you now, seeing these beautiful particles, these crystalline shards, glittery pieces just coming back, flying back to yourself now like iron filings coming back to yourself like a magnet, just coming back, coming back. Welcoming in wholeness, welcoming back your fullness. This is a very important energetic clearing exercise to do constantly. And just observe how you're feeling right now. You feel the shift, you feel the expansion, you feel the grounding within yourself. You feel a fullness. And with this empowerment, this presence, comes the stability that is so crucial for us to cultivate in every now moment. Oh, beautiful work, everyone. Very good. You see how simple it is to return to yourself? Do you see and feel the contrast of yourself versus not self? This is key 
for going forward. Uh, something that's very important to mention, the first nine months of any calendar linear year are about the self-development, the self-gestation. And that ninth and 10th month become very interesting because we've done so much deep work, clearing and revelations and seeing and anchoring and intending, like just nonstop, right? The emotional clearing, the ancestral work, there's just so much connection to be made, to enjoy. That by the time we get to the end of the year, it becomes this condensed energy where all of a sudden now <clears throat> the whole year and the most intense aspects of the year are essentially squeezed into the last three months of the calendar year. It's very interesting. So from now until January, there's going to be an intensification of everything that we've been witnessing in gradual pieces all year and the last four years, which is why it is imperative now that we choose <clears throat> to be our authentic self. That we choose to use our mastery tools every day, every hour. So another wonderful support for you is affirmations. My favorite one that I got from the wonderful evolutionary astrology service called Sirius, like the planet Sirius, Sirius Joy, highly recommend their services, is today, I love myself. I love my life. I love myself some more. And you just keep on that one. And maybe you have this go off every hour because there's a lot that has to be shifted and it has to be done from within, right? So if we don't truly like ourselves, love ourselves, appreciate ourselves, see or recognize ourselves, if we do not truly value ourselves, if we are not seeing ourselves through the eyes of source and feeling that infinite love, we are kinking the hose. We are twisting ourselves away and we are choosing to be in a self-serving because it's narcissism when we choose the wounding over the authentic self right we are not the wounding we are the result of the medicine of the integration and it's part of our service work then to share that medicine however that comes forth uniquely for each individual so now we're going to transition into some of the higher archetype energies of the planets in the first webinar earlier in the year, we talked a lot about the planets and what they are inviting us to do. So now we're going to take it to the next level. Now we're going to collapse time between now and February when we first introduced this material. And I invite you to review how has this been for you? Have you been listening? Have you been devoted and committed in doing the work? Or are you allowing excuses to continue to rule stories, separation, external conditions, blame, essentially victim consciousness. So we're going to in other layers of this. So if you answered, well, yeah, that's still going on for me to any of these, that's great. That's fine. There are many layers. What matters is that we are committed and that we are doing the work on a daily basis, right? Because this is mastery. So we're going to talk about Saturn. We already shared, Saturn has said, if you are comfortable, there's illusion there. There is delusion there. It means you're not trying hard enough, not being open enough to exploring new things and creating the new neural pathways within your being by exploring the new things, being open to new things, welcoming in shifts and opportunities, trusting divine timing as well, not allowing the ego to rule and define this has to happen right now, you know, or why hasn't this happened yet? That's always a big one for so many of us is patience and making sure that we are aligning ourselves with our creations, right? With our highest timelines. Conversely, there's an aspect of this where we are seeing the control mechanisms that we have, which are coming from fear. Time to let all of those go. So Saturn is about timing, divine timing, karma, the laws of the universe, also ruling the structures, right? And so Saturn will really help you like a blade. You think about the rings of Saturn and how they spin like a saw blade. And you can work with Saturn, finding Saturn in your own chart, connecting with Saturn as your inner elder wisdom keeper, and using those blades to cut away false beliefs. The planet Uranus is electrical. 
it's God consciousness. It's the innovation and that crazy genius where you get hit with a lightning bolt flash of intuitive insight or a creative idea or impulse that perhaps the human mind is like, oh no, that's crazy. That's, that's just crazy. That's not going to happen. That's not going to work. And you want to make sure that you're not writing off your divine genius impulses, that you're really spending a moment there. Wait a minute. What is this? Where did this come from? Because you will be receiving these divine impulses of inspired action, creative pursuits, people to reach out to, or go here, check this out. Hey, Google this, you know, and all of a sudden you're in these wormholes, you're in these rabbit holes, co-creating, co-collaborating with your universe as your guide, which is leading you to more of that which you intend to live, to create, to share, and to be your highest timelines, your highest realities. So Saturn and Uranus both rule the sign of Aquarius. And where we are right now, the planet Pluto, which we're, we're going to go there next, Pluto is in the sign of Capricorn for only four more weeks, about five more weeks at the time of this uh, video, which is the 16th of October, 2024. So we have about a month, a little over a month, before Pluto leaves Capricorn forever, forever, for our lifetime. And goes into Aquarius. Now, in the beginning of the year, when we did the first piece of Keys, Codes, and Crossroads, that live webinar, we had Aquarius and Pluto dancing for the first time for us. So what's interesting is we've had these, you know, sprinkling down intuitive ideas, uh, genius. Oh my gosh, yes, this is the dream. This is my life. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is what my life is about. This is how I can finally get there. This is what I'm here to do in the new paradigm, right? So these revelations were coming through in the beginning of the year, and we had the majority of the year to start playing with them and to really gather information from the higher realms, uh, from these futuristic uh, portals, downloads of what we are to be in the next phase of our reality, the roles and different ways for us to show up. So now... Having not quite three months of Pluto going back into the sign of Capricorn, where it was the last 16 years, this is a gift from the universe, from source, for us to then take those higher timeline downloads and create the infrastructure right now. And so why we were guided to do this webinar is that you must start with yourself first as the divine architect, right, to align with the blueprints. And then from that place of alignment, receive the strategies and all of the different practical steps. And this is where it can get a little bit linear, even though things may not be in the order of A, B to Z, right? But you're going to receive the pieces and then you're going to receive when to take action on all of those different pieces and what to do. And it's all step by step, but you're aligning with it. So you imagine like you're in the land of Oz right now with how psychedelic everything is and the energy swirling around, right? And you're just stabilizing yourself one piece at a time. And as you look at the beautiful path before you, you only get one step at a time. Only one stone appears at a time. You take one step and then you're kind of like looking around, waiting, you know, and you have to be in this receptive state, right? So there's a balancing of the masculine and feminine archetypal forces of creation within us so that we can come from a unified state of being. In the receptive mode, as a sacred feminine, receiving the information, the energy, the insight and wisdom, and then activating our sacred masculine to take action and to stand tall, right? And to not bend or break, to not compromise. And so this is the time of building the strategy and the game plan, and also not being fixed on any outcome. So you don't want to have your eggs all in one basket. You want to be diversified in your portfolio, in your income streams, in your interests, in where you are investing your energy. The only rule, the only hard and fast rule is that it has to do with new earth. So anywhere where we are investing still somehow or participating in the old paradigm and the matrix system, it's time for that to end. Um, the more willing we are to exit and to dissolve, you know, do some cord cutting, whatever it is to no longer engage in those frequencies, the better. 
where we have willful ignorance at this point in the journey, it will be very uncomfortable because we're creating karma. So rather than have harshness in your experience, rather than have collapses by behaving unconsciously, you can choose to have the power to behave consciously. And so we are the pole shift and it's a conscious choice in every moment, right? So the invitation now is to choose new earth fully, not just say it, not just think about it, not just talk about it, you know, not just uh, pretend. And we're all pretending on some level because we're learning just how deep this goes, right? So there's no judgment in any of this. It's all revelation. It's all clarity. It's all truth. It's all alignment for all of us, right? It's wonderful. But the invitation is to plug into the new and higher grids now. To be the stabilizer in your reality, to be the cornucopia of abundance, to be the bridge to new earth. So it starts with yourself, existing as the trinitized beingness of sacred father, sacred mother, holy child, right? And then the consciousness behind all of that, the I am presence observing the witness consciousness as you're moving and flowing between those states of being. So if you're feeling burnt out or crabby or unmotivated or uninspired come into the sacred child and play get curious come return to that heart's innocence come to the quantum playground when you are feeling wanting to feel more in the body the body is talking to you come into your feminine and do the embodiment practices sacred movement going out on the planet and connecting with gaia herself right and then listen to when it is time to structure and to put that newfound energy, inspiration, the creation into action and to share, right? And so there's an aspect of this where we have to play with our psychology like, okay, yeah, it's the 11th hour. We are the ones we've been waiting for, right? And that expression has been going around for decades. So it is the critical mass. It is the critical hour now. To no longer indulge in the old. Have compassion for where the light hits you and brings up programming. That's what we're all here to do is deprogramming. Just don't get stuck in it. And you don't have to beat yourself up, right? So we want to remove the judgment of where we are. We want to completely obliterate comparison. And the tendency as humans to look at outside information and feedback over our own internal sovereign information. It's time to step up and step in. And to know that we create the global crystal grid system through our own hearts and with the divine cosmos as that beingness inside, as a universe. <laughs> okay, so the next piece is to check in with your feelings now. This is another huge aspect. The next six months here, we're going to get intimately connected anywhere that we repressed emotions <laughs> and go through a lot emotionally. And so you want to make sure that you're not ruled by your emotions, but you see them for what they are, energy. Observe what they are here to teach you. When you are feeling unpleasant emotions, it's time to stop. When you feel the dip down in your energy, in your frequency, it's time to stop, pull away. So, oh, I need to take a moment here and do what you got to do. Whatever that looks like. It might be lying down and resting. It might be stepping outside for some silence, sitting in the sun, going out in nature, finding a private moment somehow to create a sacred space for yourself and to imagine before you an altar table. And you're sitting there as a divine council of all the master aspects of yourself. And you ask, what is here? What is present right now? Oh, fear of the future is a big one for all of us, right? All right, well, where, why? Well, I, you know, I've been putting energy into this and it's, there's, there's no fruition yet. I'm, it's not coming all the way yet. I'm not receiving for it yet fully, okay? So we're placing our focus on a materialization versus the energy of the creation and the energy of the journey. So for many of us, this can be with financial, right? You're like, oh my gosh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how this is going to work. That's okay. So you want to 
allow yourself to feel the fear, to listen, walk, talk through the stories with yourself. Well, this happened and it made me feel this, or, you know, someone said this to me and I just noticed this reaction and you want to sit with it and decharge it until it's done. You want to check in with your feelings all the time. When you're not in heaven inside of yourself, it lets you know, ooh, okay, I've got something I got to deal with, right? That's your mastery. And so to ask you point blank to assist you, on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being just completely ecstatic, <laughs> how happy do you feel? How happy are you with yourself and with your life and others in your life, the circumstances, situations, events that you find yourself in with your reality? How happy are you? Okay. And you want to take note of this. And if you feel unhappy, then you want to indulge the inner child and do something that would make you happy, whether it's blowing bubbles or coloring, listening to music going to play and laugh with friends, getting out in nature, go see a movie, do something that's fun for yourself, do something creative and fun. Um, have a spa day, you know, do something. It doesn't have to be expensive, right? Self-care can be as easy as just massaging your scalp. So I invite you to just massage your scalp with me right now. You feel how good that feels. All of a sudden you can feel like, ooh, there's all this energy coming out of my skull right now. You know, I feel so expanded now, right? Because you allowed yourself to release and move the energy. It can be very simple, very simple. So remember, the mind always wants to make things complicated and then you feel like, oh, that's not worth it. That's too much, right? And that's an excuse because you're worth anything and everything. And so you want to look at your scale of happiness or fulfillment. A wonderful tool for navigating decision-making process while you are getting more sensitized to reading energy because the body is the ultimate barometer to assist you to read energy and to navigate, right? You're going to feel a, yeah, oh yes, ooh, that feels good. That feels expansive. That feels exciting to me. That feels energizing to me. That feels like, oh, when I think about that and how it makes me feel, I have infinite energy for that, right? Versus, oh, that thing, it makes me feel icky or it feels like a closed door, you know, or a dead end street. It's not going to go anywhere. I'm stuck there, right? So those are ways to identify information as all of us are becoming more aware of the interconnectivity of our own perception with the energetic fields around us, right? This is one of the gifts of the destabilization that's happening right now. Um, on one hand, uh, we feel more <laughs> like, oh my gosh, you know, on a linear level, I can't function or things are different or, you know, everything you think of to try doesn't work, right? Because we're no longer meant to think, we're meant to perceive now to start strengthening that muscle. And while this tool that's an innate part of your being is developing for you, here's a really great exercise you can play with. So you imagine, let's say you have two to three choices right now about something that's very important to you. So you want to have, depending on how many choices, right, two to three, you're going to have two to three doors in front of you in your imagination. Behind door number one is option A. Door number two, option B. Door number three, option C. And you're going to get so sensitive that eventually you don't even have to open the door or walk through the door anymore. You're going to know right away now, oh, no, I don't want to go in there. Before you even open it, just by feeling and thinking, oh, that's option A or B or C, right? But for now, while we are resensitizing ourselves, let's look at the first door. Now you open that door and you walk through, how do you feel? Is it a yes or a no? Does it feel good or does it not feel good? Does it feel icky or constrictive, or squeezy? Okay, now try door number two. How does it feel to walk through that scenario? How do you feel? Does it feel true? And the same now for door number three. Open the door, walk through, how does it feel? Is it a yes or a no? Expansive, contracting. And then from all three, maybe you can choose. 
maybe all of them feel terrible. And you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know. None of them then. That means you got to wait for more information. So whatever that is, that dilemma, that crossroads in your reality, I have a thing, you know, uh, like when we use the um, the cooker machines, the Instapot cookers, like set it and forget it, right? Instapot, set it and forget it. So when you don't yet have a resolution or the feedback or you're at an impasse, it means put it down, move on to the next topic. Always move on, move on, move on, move on, move on. Only go where the doors are open. Don't waste your time hitting your head against doors that are closed. It's not in your best interest. It's not your mastery to do so. So you may go from topic to topic and subject matter to subject matter, right? Uh, navigating around. And sometimes it feels like you're going in a circle and you're just trying all the doors until one of them opens, right? Uh, the next piece that's very important because we talk about work, 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 right? <laughs> a lot of mastery here, a lot of intensity, responsibility, accountability. We also want to reflect on, we want to make space now for what is working. What are you celebrating right now? Look at the growth over this year, everything you've learned and seen and expanded into, all the things that were intense that you thought, oh, I don't know if I'm going to make it through that, you know, all the programming too, that conceptually you're like, oh gosh, I, I don't think I'm going to make it, you know, because a lot of these things can feel so intense and we have many ego deaths, right, of the programs. So what are you celebrating that you have witnessed, that you've gone through, come out on the other side, clarity you have received, more self-knowing about who you are, more connection with your guidance, with your soul, with your higher power, with the planet, new worlds opening up to you that you're so excited to learn about and explore. Like all of a sudden, I'm just obsessed with mushrooms. I love learning about them. I love seeing them outside and learning about how they live and the mycelium, you know, nerding out over something that just brings you total delight and also opens up new passions new forms of healing and wholeness for you, uh, perhaps even new gifts. Have you noticed more and more of your psychic abilities coming online? More gifts connecting with yourself and with others, more passions. So what is new for you to celebrate? Many of us are entirely new beings already now This at this end of the year. And there will be more. There's always more. There's never ending upgrades, right? In this quantum consciousness video game of our reality <laughs> is light, right? There's always more light. And it's important and comforting to remember that you, you're not getting it wrong. You're always on the path. You just have to remember that and come back, right? Because source and soul is always going to be calling you back. So when you feel unhappiness or any forms of misery just know that's because you're feeling separate from your source from your soul which is an illusion right that's a lie so all you have to do is just remember i am not separate and i'll feel better i may not feel at my highest point in this now but i will feel better and it feels good to feel good and it feels good to know these things and to remember these things that are truths certain inalienable truths within me right and so what shifts have you made in your life? What shifts are you now seeing to make adjustments to make, right? And trusting yourself and your wisdom. So it's a beautiful time now to develop the strategy for the rest of this calendar year and to prepare for more to come, to remember our emotional mastery. So you want to remember that your emotions our information, their energy in motion, their wisdom teachers, invite them with your heart wide open. Do not judge them. Look at everything, even what we would, you know, call the ugly emotions. It's all has to come out, right? As we surrender the battle within and anywhere we are not at peace within, we are also doing our soul level unified field grid work for the collectives. As we become more peaceful, we will create more peace in the world, right? What did the Buddha say? If you want to change the world, focus on your enlightenment, focus on your path, right? So let's see here. 
we're going to talk again. I want to um, go back to perceiving and living as energy from the first webinar earlier in the year. So you want to start to see yourself. We're going to do an activation here. So just relax, close your eyes, quiet down the mind, relax your face, relax all the muscles in your body. We have an activation that we call the jellyfish, the quantum plasma jellyfish. Release and surrender all tension from your body now and melt and see yourself like the most beautiful crystal jellyfish just floating in the sea of holy love bobbing along, floating along, effortlessly shimmering, dancing, breathing. So seeing yourself as this jellyfish with no resistance throughout your being and now inviting in the light to flash through, to shine through. So it's as if someone turned a floodlight on over your head. So we're activating the soul star chakra here, calling on the beautiful solar crystalline light from Solaris to shine down through our soul star chakra and to illuminate our ninth and eighth chakras above us. Activating the Godhead chakra there in the ninth and seeing this beautiful lavender platinum light flooding forth over you, over your entire body and your being lavender platinum silver white light particles dancing through you so seeing yourself now as just a flood of light no longer solid just seeing yourself as a shaft of light a column of light breathing enjoying your luminosity and brilliance and beauty and peace and unity and we invite you to download from your future self which is your now self how to let all information pass through your consciousness to discern dissect and digest the vibration to then feel the appropriate response so seeing before you as you are a shaft of white light seeing before you an orb of crystalline golden diamond light that is your future self your soul aspect and now seeing a beautiful bridge between you and this future self orb and receiving the downloads as energy as an energetic being of how to perceive and live expanded as energy breathing and receiving this information into your being, whether you hear it all and see it all and know it all now or not, it doesn't matter because it's being downloaded into you for you to receive in divine harmony and highest alignment for your consciousness. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. This initiates our divine gifts as sacred feelers, trusting that we are emotional, energetic beings, fixed states of being versus flowing or wave form energy, the fluctuation of beingness from particle to wave, welcoming in divine harmonic and divine balance, that we will remember these gifts, these codes of the wave form learning as plasma, as a form of water, living as waves of small, large crest and still waters again, and to repeat, to allow the waterfalls and the crashing through the emotional revelation and the currents as we shift and flow with the universe and expand into more self-knowingness, self-intimacy, self-love and recognition and value beyond what we ever knew before. Beautiful, just continuing to breathe and enjoy this expansion. And we thank you for joining us to understand the themes of 2024 on emotional, spiritual, and energetic levels. Welcoming in the next levels of confidence and trust and feeling prepared to flow with the cycles of active 
and at rest as your light body, as your light requests of you. It is time to be our own best friends all the time, both privately and in public with others. The last and most important key code of the next four weeks as we wrap up Pluto and Capricorn and dive in to the new era of Pluto and Aquarius and the Aquarian age is to trust and completely activate our sovereign self-governance. We are divine, we are sovereign, we are free. This is a year where our energy will be matched intensely with equal measure. So it is our joy to share what we have received for how to navigate this amazing year full of opportunity, change, and abundance. Remember that this power year of eight adds a power pack, oomph, acceleration to your abilities to achieve and receive on much higher levels in divine grace and abundance naturally to go beyond what you perceived is possible, to up-level our entire lives through the focus and consistent practice of self-love, energetic and emotional mastery, and most importantly, the states of surrender to deep listening. This is the time now where we want to show up and give our honest best effort each day to receive, to be, to share, to step up and step in, to anchor and lock in with our higher self and to commit a sacred relationship of living as an avatar, as a light being. So I thank you all so much for joining me today. If you wish to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, we are offering specials. We have uh, micro sessions available, light blast sessions. We have full sessions available in the Akashic Oracle state together to strategize and to deprogram where you receive six months worth of information in one session because the light is pervasive and brings a lot of information for us and other opportunities to work together. If you wish to look at your astrology chart and to start to get the cosmic divine blueprints of your soul through the planetary and the star constellation energies, we can do that too. So just reach out to me for any support at PNW, like Pacific Northwest, higher love at proton.me. PNW, higher love at P R O T O N dot me. This is Merce Indigo. I thank you so much for joining me for this. It's been an absolute pleasure to share these transmissions with you all. I wish you an amazing end of 2024 and the gifts of yourself, unity with yourself, mastery with yourself, and all that that will bear for you as you step in to the next level of your life. Thank you so much for joining me, sending you all the love and support and so much joy. Mm, namaste.